Hey guys, in this week's episode, we are talking about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. But before that, we're talking about a lot of trailers that have dropped recently that we have not talked about on the show. And Chris and I saw Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning. So, part one. Part one. Join us! Nice. (laughs) Casual Cinecast, powered by Cinelinks. My name is Chris, and with me as always is Mike. Mike, I want to ask you a question. Indiana Mike and the blank of destiny. What would you, what what word or adjective would you use? Or not, not <laughs> adjective, what, uh, what noun? What noun? Yeah, what noun? Let's see. Uh, the hamburger. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the show, Mike. Uh, I will say that. And then also joining us Thank is you. Justin. Uh, Justin, Indiana Jones. Maybe that doesn't work very well. Uh, Indiana Jones, Justin. Indiana Justin. Indiana Justin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, what would you put in there? Blank uh, and the dial, or wait, no. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm really messing Indiana this up. Indiana Justin and the blank of destiny? <laughs> yes, there we go. Thank yeah. you, Mike. You're welcome. Bailing me out of that one. Yeah. I- yeah, no one noticed, I bet. No, <laughs> nah, it was seamless, really. Um, <laughs> probably the, I'm going to say the goal. I almost said the soccer ball, but I think like the goal is a bit more, more fun. Oh, it's the goal of like a soccer, goal. like a soccer goal, scoring a yeah. soccer goal, not like the goal of destiny, not That's the like the... net, but yeah, the goal of destiny. <laughs> I, yeah. When you said it initially, I was thinking like the objective of destiny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like the like, thing like I'm trying to goal. accomplish. But no, yeah. Yeah. scoring in a game of soccer, of destiny. <laughs> I mean, that is a goal, though. It's true. It's the intention. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe that's why they call it that. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't the most creative. No. <laughs> Chris, what, what about you? Uh, I think I would go with uh, a food item similar to Mike's uh, enchilada of destiny. <laughs> I, I do love a good enchilada. <laughs> All right. That's true. I, Chris, can I can I um, tell the people how you almost got me in trouble? I don't think I was anywhere close to getting you in trouble, but you can absolutely tell the people. Okay, well, here's what happened, trouble. people. Uh, I went home to uh, to our hometown, all of our hometown, uh, where Chris still lives, uh, but I do not. And um, I ran into Chris in the grocery store, and I was picking up ingredients to make my grandma lunch. And I counted in my basket as I was going up to the line, which is why I ran into Chris. And I had 11 items and the checkout was a max of 10. And I said, oh, no, I have 11. Do you think they'll let me through? And he was like, I don't know. And then I was like, "Okay, well, I'll see you later. I'm going to go check out. And I went and he called the person who worked there, who I think, to be fair, is a person he knew. And he was like, hey, this guy only has or this guy has 11 items. He doesn't have 10. Don't let him check out. And he (laughs) he tried to wrap me out. I did. And I mean, I just we in your favor. Well, it, it does make me look worse because you're trying to make your grandma dinner or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's that, why that, I included that in detail. In my mind, I did not know that. Uh, otherwise, maybe I would have snuck you through. But uh, yeah, rules are rules, Justin. I know. Uh, we like, live in a society. Justin. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You can't just go through the self checkout line uh, with 11 items, man. And then on top of that, this is how ineffectual I am. Uh, the person that I was trying to get their attention, they just. They didn't care one bit. <laughs> yeah, they just like they just let you. you go through. They're, they're just, like, leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. They're like, I'm just Stop trying to do a me. job here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and okay, in my defense, I I used one of seven empty self checkout places. <laughs> so it's <laughs> yeah, not it like I was I was holding up someone with with oh, okay, nine so items. It, was, it wasn't even a cashier. No, no, it was no, a, it was self it was checkout. Yeah, and it was pretty empty. But rules are rules, Justin. I know. You I, know? Yeah. I put my cart in the return cart thing. Um, I picture after. them like taking you to the back and it's like that scene in Casino where they catch that guy cheating <laughs> mm-hmm. and they yeah. hit him with a hammer. Yeah. <laughs> Except they did just did it, it to in... my 11th item. <laughs> did you walk <laughs> it all the way back up to the front? The cart? Or did you just put it in the return? I put it cart. in the return out in the parking lot by my car. Have you seen those guys? Like, because they, they don't have like a an automated way to bring in those carts. So yeah. they have like two or three people that are always bringing in carts. Yeah, I did that was my first job when I was like 
16 years old. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like right now on my computer, it says it's 106 degrees out. It's seven o'clock at night. <laughs> they, they are like struggling to bring those carts in. So I, I would say walk it all the way in next time, yeah. buddy. Okay. Stay You're cool, just, everyone. Your grocery okay. etiquette is all, all right. off. Yeah. We're moving on. If this okay. is your first time listening, normally we like to start off every episode not talking about uh, grocery store adventures, but in a section called News on the March, where we talk about film and TV news or the film and TV that we have been watching. Uh, and then we move into our feature review. Like I said at the top of the show, this week we are reviewing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Yeah, one of the things we like to do when we're not dialing Destiny uh, here on the Casually uh, Cinecast uh <laughs> show <Nailed it. laughs> yeah what we like to do is um we put out uh, we each pick a movie from the criterion collection and then uh based on some sort of theme you, you know usually it doesn't really matter what it is but we pick one we put it out on the interwebs uh on twitter but you know everything's going to hell maybe, so maybe it'll be, be threads yeah or blue sky or something uh, who knows what we're gonna do uh maybe we'll do an old-fashioned like write-in everybody will just write in by mail yeah although that, that has its own issues as well. But anyways, you can write <laughs> Logistically in. Logistically, a little bit more complicated, yes. Yeah. But we do listen to you guys, the the listeners. Uh, and you guys get to pick the show, the movie that we talk about out of the, in, you know, the three of us. And usually it's a Criterion Collection. Uh, most movies in there are uh, phenomenal anyway. So we, we're all winners in this situation. <laughs> what we did last time was La Dolce Vita, which is a, a great movie uh, if you haven't watched it. Um, Spoiler for Chris's thoughts. Yes. If if you have any curiosity, go back and listen to that one. I didn't like it. Uh, but <laughs> uh, our next movie is going to be uh, Mishima, uh, Life in Four Chapters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and that was my movie that won. That's the most important part of that. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. That's what all the people want to know. They just yeah, care about who yeah. wins and loses. They don't actually listen yeah, to our reviews. Chris bearing the lead there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My, my bad. Yeah. But as, as Chris said, we put the uh, our choices out. Onto Twitter, uh, we put them up in a poll. So follow us there at Casual Cinecast. Um, that is the best place to follow us. It's pretty much the only place we post. It's the only place we post the poll. So if you want to vote, you got to go there. Um, and then if you want to message us, ask us questions about any movies we're reviewing, you can send a message to that account or to Casual Cinemedia at gmail dot com. And then of course, if you haven't done so already, you like the show, uh, give us a review on iTunes or whatever platform you listen to podcasts on. Yeah, please and thank you. Okay. Uh, so we should move into news on the march now. Yep. Okay. Here we go. News on the march! All right, so first up in news on the march, we are talking about a bunch of trailers. So that's what we're doing for a little bit. Then we'll move into a small talk about Mission Impossible. So anyway, Justin, why don't you kick us off? What trailer would you like to talk about first? Yeah, I think I want to start us off with like the most important one, you know, a lot of really important trailers, you know, big movies that we've. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what you deem the most important. things that we've been, yeah. been anticipating for a long time, you know, so I yeah. think we should start with the, the Twisted Metal series trailer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay, I, we don't have to talk about this one very long, actually. I, I did just want to mention it because I think I was surprised that it looks decent to me. <laughs> like, it does not look as nearly as bad as I thought it would, and I'm slightly intrigued and uh, way more optimistic than I ever was, which was um, very pessimistic. So, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I was surprised. What did you guys think? I think I was surprised, too. Because uh, like a week ago or so, like a week and a half ago, a clip uh, actually dropped from this show as well, like before the trailer. And the clip that I saw, I didn't think looked very good at all. Yeah. Like, I thought it was a really bad clip. And I was like, my God, why would they <laughs> why would they release this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, I thought it was like almost objectively bad. So I, I was even more pessimistic than than you you were, I think. Um yeah, because I didn't see that clip. Yeah, once I saw that clip. And then the trailer came out, and I was like, okay, like maybe all the humor like doesn't super land for me. But 
I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's an IP, like it's a video game with not a very strong storyline. So I think you can do a lot and take a lot of liberties. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I'm interested to see how close to the games they'll stick. Like it doesn't seem to be a tournament. Right. And there doesn't seem to be like a Calypso character who's going to grant a wish, you know. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if that's important to capturing the vibe and like the spirit of Twisted Metal. Could be that the climax of the series is uh, a tournament, you know, like at the end. They just haven't shown any of it yet. Sure. Yeah. yeah I mean, they could have just shown like clips from like the first episode, you know. Yeah. Uh, who knows? But yeah, I think it looks OK. Like there's potential, I guess. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Yeah, I certainly know that you guys played the game more than I did <laughs> uh, because you played sure. it at all. Um, so yeah. I don't have a connection or even like knowing who Calypso is. Or no. granting wishes. All that seems ridiculous to me. Uh, <laughs> what I do know is... Um, <laughs> gibberish. Yeah, it's all gibberish. <laughs> that sounds uh, terrible and like nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I do like... What has me intrigued about the trailer is there was some good, goofy lines. Uh, you know, like... What's his name? Captain America. Anthony, Anthony Mackie. Mackie. Anthony Mackie. Uh, you know, like... Uh, has a gun in his mouth and he's delivering some sort of witty quippy line, uh, which also can be bad. It could go South real easy on that. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. I will certainly, I, uh, I'm interested. Uh, I'll watch the first episode. It's on Peacock. Apparently that's the only drawback because that means I have to subscribe to Peacock, which is just another service. So like, uh, that's, that may be the major issue of me not watching it. Yeah. But I think Peacock has kind of proven themselves to, potentially do like some good shows you know because yeah poker face was pretty decent poker face was oh, good yeah, yeah. chris poker didn't you like that good. nun show oh yeah i did uh i didn't finish it. i can't remember the name all the way, which i guess it speaks to uh how much i liked it there's just there's so much and i think maybe like usually what i do is i subscribe to something and i immediately cancel it you know because i'll just <laughs> before re- you watch it subscribe anything. Yeah, before no well i cancel it and it lasts for a month right yeah but that way it's not on my it's not an automatic renewal thing right uh so usually if i still want to watch something if i feel motivated enough to i will resubscribe to it so yeah i guess that's that speaks well, to that but. you're doing it incorrectly you're supposed to subscribe for the free trial and then forget for six yeah, six first. to eight months yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. and then make a note to remind yourself to cancel at a later time once you remember or figure it yeah. out. Yeah. And then it goes for another six to eight months. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. Okay. So uh, anything else we want to say about Twisted Metal? Nope. I don't think so. I've All right. Just was when does that come out? Do you guys have the release date off the top of your head? Mm, no. I would assume sometime in August. July 27th. July. I was wrong. There you go. Good job. Well, not too much sooner long. than I thought. <laughs> yeah. Same. Yeah. All right. Um, next one. Um, Mike, what one do you want to do next? Uh, let's just get this over with. Wonka. (laughs) (laughs) What a Wonka Uh, trailer. So, I don't know. Here's the thing. I always thought in the very, like, inception of this movie was a bad idea. Like, when it got green light or green lit, I was like, ugh, that sounds horrible. Uh, then the trailer came out, and... I was reminded that it was the director of Paddington and Paddington 2. And I was like, "Uh, you know, maybe. And I will give it this one compliment. It does seem to be wholesome and genuine and not that kind of like cynical humor, you know? It seems like it's really going for like the heartfelt, earnest kind of movie, like in the spirit of Paddington. Mm -hmm. That said, I feel like Timothy Chalamet... I don't know what he's like, like. He's like he delivers every line with like zero charisma. Would you he's say not doing him any favors that he? It's trying to be a prequel to a Gene Wilder performance. I, you know, I don't know. Um, sure, he may. Uh, it may be Timothy Chalamet may not be the right character or actor for this <laughs> performance. There Maybe. you go. Yeah, I nailed it. Uh, you know, but then also like in the trailer, I'm struck by how little I care about the origin of Willy Wonka. Mm-hmm. Like when he's talking <laughs> about like trying to perfect chocolate and like he seems to bust out those chocolates that can make you fly for the first time and like blowing everyone's mind. And I'm like, I don't need this. I don't, what, what are we doing here? Sure. So. Yeah. I, I do agree that the one sort of ray of hope is its connection to Paddington, which are both pretty delightful movies. Yeah. Agreed. But that also feels at odds 
with the Gene Wilder, uh, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, because that movie's not that wholesome. It's pretty no. dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, a little twisted and weird in its own way, despite maybe still at the end of the day being a family movie. Um, there's some genuinely creepy stuff <laughs> that, yeah. that goes on. Um, and it scared me when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, and this, I don't know, this doesn't seem like it's going down that road. And I just feel like, yeah, who makes this me say for? why? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I do think, well, after having seen the trailer, I think I would say there is a possibility. It, like, if you were six, seven, six to ten, you know, or whatever, there might be an imagination or a wonder that uh, captures your attention. Um, that being said, I'm not six to ten years old anymore. Uh, I can recognize it for what it is, but it may not be for me uh, in that way. Uh, but. Yeah. I, I I agree with both of you. The Paddington um, connection makes me more interested in it than I was previously. Um, so hopefully, I, I'm hoping for good things. We'll see. Or yeah. I can just wait for Paddington three, which will have like I think it's got Olivia, Olivia Coleman in it. So yeah. that'll be fun. Yeah, how exciting! Yep. Okay, Chris, what trailer do you want to talk about next? All right, uh, you took the best one. And that being Wonka. Me? Uh, let's do... Oh, boy. I, I feel like there's... Okay, I'm just going to... Let's do the Ahsoka trailer. Okay. And we can save the the last two movies. So Ahsoka, I think it's one that especially you two are really looking forward to. I am as well. But, you know, you guys being the, the Star Wars nerds are really excited about. But this trailer looked really good. You know, like... On Twitter, I saw some something comparing Ahsoka. They're like, when TV shows look this good, like, no wonder movies aren't doing as well. They they look as good as movies. And, and I think that that's true, at least in this trailer for Ahsoka. It looks really great. Like, the special effects and CGI and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am excited to go on this journey. I watched Rebels, but this actually made me want to go back and revisit Rebels. I was like, I don't know exactly. Where do we leave everybody? You know, like, maybe I'll watch the last season just to... Uh, refresh myself but i'm excited about it i'm excited to see how it connects with everything else um i think they should have said heir to the empire like six or seven more times in the trailer but (laughs) uh uh, because it made me excited but anyways so uh justin what did you think i thought it looked awesome like it made me so glad that i really caught up on all that animated star wars and particularly rebels Mm -hmm. um because you know my first experience with ahsoka was when she pops up in mandalorian you know, so she was a mm-hmm. relatively new character to me, other than the fact that before I had got around to watching her Mandalorian episode, mm-hmm. uh, I had seen people talk about Ahsoka showed up <laughs> and I was like, who's this? I don't know. Um, and uh, so uh, it it's just really, really exciting. And um, I think I have that extra baggage of having just caught up with everything that like yeah, it makes me super grateful that this is coming out and exists. And um, yeah, yeah, I think I think it looks a, a lot like a lot of fun. If you haven't seen Rebels out there and you're listening, uh, it feels like you it almost feels like you need to, although I'm sure they'll do a good job of um, filling in the gaps. But like this feels like a continuation of Rebels uh, based on this sure. trailer. Like yeah. it feels like it's going to be, you know, Rebels season five, right? There's four seasons of Rebels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like Rebel season five, but live action, and they should have many years really later. This, this season, Star Wars Rebels without a cause because the war is over. <laughs> That's true. No, I no. don't get it. Okay, <laughs> maybe they'll have a cause though. So. Yeah. yeah, maybe so. Maybe they can't. They can't actually name it that because then it wouldn't be accurate. <laughs> okay. Obviously, um, <laughs> yeah, and it it just looks great, and once again. The Star Wars TV is really doing it for me. And like, I don't miss the movies at all, to your point, Chris, <laughs> like the Star Wars movies. I'm like, yeah, I don't care if we get another one, if this is what the TV looks like. But that's a conversation for a different day, probably. Sure. Um, <laughs> Mike, maybe later on today when we talk about Indiana Jones. Yeah. Mike, maybe. What do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm right there with Justin uh, and Chris, obviously. I, I think it looks really great been a fan of star wars animation for a while so this feels like a good payoff i hope it's as good 
as the trailer shows. I think, first of all, uh, the late Ray Stevenson looks absolutely awesome in this trailer. And yeah. it's a bummer. Like, I hope his character is, like, closed out in, like, a way with, like, closure, you know? And it's not just, like, open-ended and all that stuff. That's a super bummer that he passed so early. I've always liked that guy. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, no, it all just looks great. Uh, I wonder how the show's going to look and, like, how what length episodes we're talking here. You know, uh, I know we're getting a two-episode premiere, but are these going to be, like, closer to Obi-Wan Kenobi length, or are these going to be closer to Mandalorian length, you know? Yeah. Um, what would so, you say? Mandalorian kind of fluctuates. Uh, what would I the would average... say they shoot for 30 minutes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Like, they'll, sometimes there'll be an hour, sometimes there'll be, like, 20, 22 minutes, but I think generally speaking, it's like the 30 to 35 minute range. Yeah, I think with Ahsoka, I would want 45 minutes or It seems like there's hour. a lot more plot happening yeah. than in something like Mandalorian. Mandalorian's that very, like, told, like, mythology and, like, very, like, Western, you sure. know. This actually seems like there's stuff happening, like, plot. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, Mandalorian's very succinct too, as as far as like plot goes. There's not much. Yeah, usually in um, Mandalorian, there's some sort of main thing that they're doing, and then it wraps up by the end of the episode. But other tiny yeah. things have like progressed that carry right. over. I feel like this one won't feel that way. Like I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll feel like we got a, a full story every episode or like a full arc oh. of a plot. You know, yeah, It'd be like more like yeah. Andor or Obi Wan. Oh yeah, yeah like, like overall arc. One yeah. main arc. I, I also wonder uh, how this all plays out to that movie that Dave Filoni is doing next that is going to be the culmination of all these series, right? So are we getting one season of Ahsoka, one more season of Mando, and then the movie? Or, you know, how's that going to work? I thought there was a season of something else, too, that we were getting. There's, yeah, there's another show called Skeleton Crew that is going to premiere later this year. But does that tie into the uh, Filoni movie? I don't know yet. No one knows. But oh, okay. in theory, if people like it. I guess but <laughs> they'll probably try to throw some characters and who knows, yeah. you know, they don't though. Ignore it. Yeah. Anyway, I agree. Ahsoka looks great. So, um, Justin, what are you gonna talk about next? Um, I guess, I guess we'll talk about, I guess we'll talk about Napoleon. Cause, um, I don't know that, I guess that's the one that's, it's been around for a while, but it was one that I'd forgotten about the most <laughs> mm-hmm. out of all of these. <laughs> And I had forgotten about it until the trailer dropped. Yeah. Yeah, sure. exactly. Um, so it was a big surprise, you know, to to see it. And um, I I kind of paid attention a little bit to the plot that was going on. And I kind of just looked at how pretty it was <laughs> and, you know, yeah, just kind of stared in awe of some of the shots because uh, I, I mean, it looks like it's going to just look amazing. And yeah, most Ridley Scott movies do look amazing. Sure. And even for that, a, I guess. <laughs> yeah, from from a looks perspective. Yeah. yeah. Even for that. And I mean, I guess you have like Blade Runners which are um kind of he like, did the if, first Yeah, he did the first Blade Runner. But like I first, mean like yeah. Last Duel looked good. Yeah. Like I don't know. Like, Prometheus looked amazing. Yeah. I guess it's true. I mean, that's that's fair. Um I I still feel like this one looks exceptionally good. Maybe I'm just maybe I'm uh, just being biased or something. Not that I have any bias towards Napoleon, but um, maybe it's because I just watched it like really recently and it's the most fresh one in my mind. But I'm like, man, this this looks better than I remember any Redley Scott movie. Looking. Were they doing camera tricks to make Joaquin Phoenix look shorter than he was? He is in real life. I would think so. I would think so, I guess, but isn't it like... I don't know if that's just because, like, I know that history portrays Napoleon as, like, a really short guy, or if that's actually the case. But I felt like multiple times in this trailer, I was like, Joaquin Phoenix is a larger man than this. How are they doing this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Could it be, like, Lynch choice? Maybe he's green screened into everything. <laughs> Maybe. Or um, digitally slimmed. I don't know. If they can de-age Harrison Ford, they can... D, D tall. Yeah. D height. Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix. <laughs> Seems like quite the expenditure, though. Yeah, I know. I'm sure they're doing something. Anyways. Maybe they're just putting him in big clothes. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I, to me, 
the Napoleon aspect itself, like the sort of biopic of Napoleon interests me way less than just going to look at a good movie. But I, I think this one will be one that you probably want to experience in a theater. Mm. Sure. Yeah. What do you, I think what it's you put out think? by um, Apple's. So hopefully we get a, a good release. Yeah. That was, I mean, I guess they probably will, right? They'll probably do a theatrical release for it and not just put it straight on Apple. Yeah. I mean, this looks pretty good, I guess. I mean, I don't know much about Napoleon other than, like, I don't know, kind of the broad strokes of him, I guess. But um, I know that Kubrick was obsessed with doing a Napoleon biopic. Yeah. And I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure when I watched this movie, that is going to be what I'm thinking about the entire time. It's like, what would <laughs> Kubrick have done? Yeah. <laughs> Which isn't fair to this movie, but, yeah, you yeah. know, it is what it is. But anyway, I don't know. Maybe it's good. I feel like Ridley Scott can put out, like, a banger, no problem as long as he has a good script. Yeah. But that's not always the case. So I don't know. Bummer. But Joaquin Phoenix is an interesting guy. I enjoy that he's not putting on some horrible French accent that, and trying to like cover up the fact that he's like American, (laughs) you know? So I'm glad it seems like everyone's doing their own accent. So we don't get to see any kind of like forced stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he did that with the last duel too, right? Was it, it was like a, Nobody had like yeah. appropriate accents, right? Yeah, I think it's better that way. the The overall product will be stronger. Yeah, agreed. Um, I I think the thing that scares me the most about this movie it seems really biopicy. It does look really good. So hopefully, even if it is biopicy, um, maybe the battle sequences will at least it's not like Johnny it. Cash yeah. or like uh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's David Bowie or something you know yeah, what I mean? it's something like... will give me it, there's enough eye candy to get me through it uh what really upsets me though is um <laughs> there everything i know about napoleon is from this alternate history book series uh with <laughs> napoleon in it and um dragons and really okay. yeah. they that should have made those won't into be of any movies. use to you yeah, I really wish that uh, they had made those into a movie. Um, Peter Jackson was supposed to. It's Tim, the Temeraire, Temer, I don't know how to pronounce him, um, but Temeraire is a dragon, and it's the, all the Napoleon Wars. Could you imagine those? all those? But if you add a dragon to it, that would have been so much better. Yeah, yeah George R. R. Martin saying. writes about that all the time in yeah. those books. It's like, what if medieval stuff, but with dragons? But a dragon, yeah. 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 There you go. Everything I know about Napoleon, I learned in uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> I learned in the animated 90s show Hysteria. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice. You Do you remember that, Justin? Nope. I'm just nodding uh, along. Uh, it was like an Verbally. Animaniac show, except for with history. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's fun. It was, I remember it being good. Yeah. Who knows, though? I'm All sure right. there's a Wishbone episode out there. <laughs> sure. For just dropping old shows. I don't know. <laughs> no one watched Wishbone. Anyway, uh, <laughs> whose turn is it? Uh, I, we've only got one left, so it's all of our turn. With yeah. <laughs> all right, Mike, so... tell us what you think about Killers of the Flower Moon. Okay, so Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, we already had one trailer for this. I think this is the longer trailer. Uh, I think it still looks good. It's still <laughs> one of my most anticipated movies of the year. Uh, I've been looking forward to it for a long time. I heard it's almost four hours. That's cool. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> this is an Apple thing, too, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, they're really trying to dethrone Netflix as the uh, artsy movie streamer. Yeah. They even poached Martin Scorsese. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Netflix had him. I know. But uh, for real, though, uh, I am excited to see the two great Scorsese protagonists uh, acting Meet. in one movie together. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's fun. Leo but and not, De Niro. For me, there's not much else to say yeah. because I don't know. Uh, I, I just feel like I feel like it objectively looks good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I can't imagine someone watching that or like knowing anything about it and knowing who Scorsese is and like the talent behind it and being like, nah. <laughs> sure. No thanks. Yeah. I I think that the thing that excites me most because I just I just got to be honest i didn't know anything about this and this is actually the first trailer i've watched for this movie so i i should watch the other one the other one's good too i thought this was the first one i'm not gonna lie (laughs) (laughs) i didn't realize this was like the second longer trailer but um i so i didn't really know what time period it was in and um 
it just very much has that like sort of western time period uh the same as like there will be blood and power of the dog which are were both movies that really excited me so just by proxy i'm excited about this one because i'm like ooh, yeah. a return to uh, a time period that was in other movies that i thought was were great yeah it's actually about the dawn <laughs> of the fbi okay well that's fun because yeah. i don't know a thing about that yeah and that sounds way more exciting that that's what this movie's about yeah that's yeah. all i know about it yeah there's a lot of like dawn of movies um that have come out that have been less exciting, like how the Air Jordan was made and how Tetris was <laughs> brought to the world. Oh yeah, I Dawn thought you were going to say Dawn of the, the Planet of yeah. the Apes, but oh, I was no. like, that movie was actually really good. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm telling you that this year, but all these like, how did this come to be? And um, yeah. the FBI sounds more interesting than a shoe. I think that part That's of true. it, it would. <laughs> I, I've read like the first few chapters of this book. Um, but I feel like the FBI part of it is secondary to the the main character, whereas right. they find oil on Native American land and people start taking advantage of it. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, cool. So we did it, right? We did all the trailers. Any Woo-hoo! Anything else? No, I don't think so. Okay. Then real quick, Chris and I will give some maybe spoiler-free thoughts on the new Mission Impossible. We saw it last night. Uh, mm-hmm. I wasn't yeah, invited. So. No, well, it's true. You would have been invited, but you had just gotten to see Indiana Jones. That's true. <laughs> I saw it for my birthday. It's yeah, it a bit of a drive for you to drive up here. So <laughs> I know so you're always invited, Justin. We'll just put that out there. You know, yeah. you, you know. I just yeah, oh, I need at true. least four and a half hours of warning yeah. to get up there. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So I will say, big fan of the Mission Impossible franchise. Really, all, like all of them, even the ones that are probably not the best movies sure um and i would say this one delivered i liked it quite a bit i would say it's like mid-tier mission impossible it's not it's not fallout it's not ghost protocol but it's like you know better than two and three and in my opinion better than five you know so good movie some bold decisions though made in it that i still am kind of mulling over in my brain uh Mm -hmm. stuff i didn't expect so i think there are some surprises in this and i also feel like my opinion of this movie will also shift depending on how part two goes sure (laughs) and i feel that way more so than i did after something like across the spider verse where i was like nope this is just good you know Mm -hmm. i feel like i may like this movie more if i know that it ends up being something really great in the finale. Um, so yeah. What about you, Chris? Yeah. I don't feel much different than you. I, I think, uh, I, I really enjoyed this movie. I, I think my drawback or like if I had a nitpicky complaint it would be, uh, it feels like we've spent, you know, like six months of watching Tom Cruise do the, the stunt, uh, driving off the cliff. Um, I don't think it's a spoiler, um, because they've put it everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just was kind of disappointed by the, um, like, what was the last one called? Fallout. Fallout. Was that, yeah, where yeah. he jumps off the plane. There's just like a bunch of like practical stuff where he's doing stunts and he may be getting too old for that. You know, like, to be honest, there were a couple of scenes where I was like, he kind of looks like Trump, <laughs> you know, like uh, just kind of old and like the wind's blowing his face. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what I would say is, and I, I, I'm like almost hundred percent sure they're de-aging them in this movie. They're we're about to talk about Indiana Jones, uh, de-aging, but like, um, there certainly was de-aging happening in, in mission impossible. But what I would say is I was expecting a little bit more of these stunts to happen. Um, and I think that that's the thing that's kind of holding me back the most. I was like, you know, you kind of go to, to mission impossible. There were cool stunts and stuff, but I, for whatever reason, my expectations were different. So maybe when I go see it again, uh, now that I've seen it, I know what it is, you know, right. when I watch it right before Dead reckoning two, um, I'll feel differently, but that's my yeah, immediate reaction. It feels reaction. less like a smorgasbord of like, of just one stunt topping another. Yeah. Like fallout was like, there's some great, awesome crazy stuff in here but i think it's a sure. little more plot oriented uh this time around sure yeah anyway this... there are some fun characters that come back from the first mission impossible at least one in particular that i'm thinking yeah. of and so i you... really enjoyed that guy uh, if you haven't seen the first one i recommend watching that before yeah um 
<laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, definitely recommend it if you like the rest of the franchise. I think this one is solid. And if you've seen everything from gross Ghost Protocol to Fallout, then you kind of know what you're in for. Yeah. That's my expectation. <laughs> yep. And uh, okay. I should be seeing it, I think, this weekend, potentially, is the plan. Okay, rock but, on. Well, I hope you we'll enjoy see. it. You'll have to let me know. Yeah. All right, so um, I think that was brief enough. Should we go ahead and get into the main review now? Let's yeah, absolutely. dial it in. All right. All right. It's Good our one, destiny to get to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> to dial it in, yeah. All right, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny review starts now. I'm jonesing <laughs> to get into this review. That was too far, Justin. <laughs> Brilla threes. Even Chris wouldn't stoop so low. <laughs> yeah. Surprise! I'm retiring. Well, in that case, what are we drinking? Same for the goddaughter. Dad told me you found something on a train during the war. A dial that could change the course of history. Why are you chasing the thing that drove your father crazy? Don't move. We need to get out of here. Stop! Sorry. Helena! Dr. Jones, get him. Hitler made mistakes, and with this, I will correct them all. You stole it. Then you stole it. And then I stole it. It's called capitalism. This way! Fasten your seatbelt. There might be some turbulence. You've taken your chances, made your mistakes, and now a final triumph. Indiana Jones. A few times in my life I've seen things. I've been tortured with voodoo. I've been shot nine times. Including once by your father. Ah, sorry. But I've been looking for this all my life. All right, so as always with our newer films, we will be doing a spoiler-free section up front where we give our general thoughts about the movie without getting uh, into spoilers or anything like that. So if you have not seen Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny yet, you can continue listening. And before we get into spoilers, we'll give you a warning, play a bumper, so that you have plenty of time to pause the podcast, go watch the movie, come back and finish listening. All right, so Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny was directed by Steven, I mean, sorry, James Mangold. <laughs> it stars Harrison Ford, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Mads Mikkelsen, Boyd Holbrook, and that's all the names on there. So the IMDb synopsis <laughs> says, archaeologist Indiana Jones races against time to retrieve a legendary artifact that can change the course of history. Yep. Yeah. I dig that synopsis. Yeah, I know. I like it. It's really cool. It's yeah. a nice thing about... Uh, <laughs> reboots and sequels and stuff is like we kind of know a lot already <laughs> yeah so it could be brief yeah just need indiana jones does a thing and you're like all right i know what that's <laughs> probably gonna be like mm -hmm. yeah do you think that synopsis would cover just about all the indiana jones movies though i was thinking that until the last like couple words and i was yeah. like yeah yeah that kind of gets into spoiler but yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but anyways okay so who wants to kick us off on this movie can, can i vote Justin. you can i vote you oh, okay because <laughs> yeah you can <laughs> I, I have known you for a long time, and you have always been the biggest Indiana Jones fan that I know, and you've always just really enjoyed these movies. Um, so I'm most curious to hear what you think. No offense, Chris, and no offense <sighs> to me either. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I, I, I was going to say you because you saw it most recently, but I will oblige you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. So I saw this movie the Thursday it opened. I saw it with Chris here. We invited you, but you couldn't make it. No, yeah. you didn't. I don't have an invite. 
I'm going to check my text messages. <laughs> I knew because I didn't give you four and a half hour lead time. Um, yeah. Anyways, uh, so yeah, watch this movie. I, like you said, have always been a big fan of the Indiana Jones franchise. I even, more than most, defend Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I don't think that movie is nearly as bad as people make it out to be, although it is clearly the lesser uh, of the four Indiana Jones movies that had existed up to this point. So yeah. I was bummed that Steven Spielberg wasn't coming back. Yeah. But, you know, he's in his musicals phase and his, like, biopic phase. And, you know, he that's fine. He doesn't need to keep making, you know, pulpy movies about punching Nazis forever. I get it. It is kind of a bummer, though, because you, you can't help but compare James Mangold to... Steven Spielberg, right? You, it's it's just sort of inherent in the, in him taking over the franchise. So you can't really do much about that. It's unfortunate, but I think James Mangold does a pretty good job. James Mangold usually delivers on at least decent studio films, like when he does that kind of thing, right? I don't think he's ever put out a, a horrible movie. At least not one that comes to mind. I don't really like one of the Wolverines, <laughs> very much. Like the first yeah. one, didn't he? Yeah, do the that first one, one he did. But then yeah. he came back with Logan, right? Which was, I think, is really good. Yeah, and that first one's, uh, I put at the feet of the of the studio. Yeah, I, I don't blame like James Mangold for that. Yeah. So, anyways, I think he's always put out. He's always been able to like work within the studio system to put out a crowd pleasing movie that feels very character based. You know, like Three Ten to Yuma or something like that. So, anyways, I will say that I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. I. Saw it the first time with Chris, and I knew I liked it, but I don't know. I It didn't really totally click with me yet, and then I saw it again like uh, two days later, and I enjoyed it much more the second time. I don't think it's as good as Raiders or Last Crusade or anything like that, but I think it's easily better than Crystal Skull, and for my money, I think I enjoy it more than Temple of Doom, even though I think Temple of Doom... Might be a better movie, but I don't know. I think that might be like childhood nostalgia. Um, sure. Co- covering my eyes on that. But then again, mm-hmm. my love for this franchise is based in childhood nostalgia. So who knows, you know? Right. Uh, but anyway, I think that pretty much wraps up my thoughts. Uh, I'll try to keep it kind of brief so we can get into spoilers as soon as possible. But I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, I'm kind of bummed that it's bombing and that it seems to be getting... I mean, it's mostly positive reviews now, but not glowing reviews by any means, you know? So I'm kind of bummed about that. Yeah, but anyways, that pretty much wraps up my opening thoughts. So, Justin, you just saw this. Uh, I was going to make you go first, but now I can make you go second. So you saw this most recently. What did you think? Well, I really enjoyed it just (laughs) right off the gate. Um, I thought it was... I thought it was really good. I thought it was really fun. Um, I have felt that way about every Indiana Jones movie, though, uh, including uh, Crystal Skull. Um, I remember Mike, you and I, um, pretty pretty aggressively defending this movie when it came out, <laughs> or that movie um, when it came out, because people were um, not fans of it, and I understand. And yeah, you know, I get it. Having yeah. revisited it um, somewhat recently, to me, it feels. Uh, more like the movie the, the worst things about the movie are like products of its time of like cg just not being where it needed to be to pull off some things that they they were trying to do and some right things like like uh, ants devouring people and monkeys and stuff <laughs> right um, right Spoilers. And, and that's i mean you know whose fault is that like i'm not sure that necessarily looks any worse than like maybe like certain CG moments in like Terminator two or Jurassic park, right. but we had a, a lower threshold then. Right. And mm-hmm. that had the unfortunate or crystal skull had the unfortunate um, luck to come out at a time where we had higher expectations, but not the ability to meet those. <laughs> I would argue that T2 and Jurassic park are just better written too. So like you sure. are more willing to forgive those things. But yes. Yeah. Um, but you know, I don't know, it's like when you first are experiencing something new, it can, you know, you, you forgive uh, the rough edges at first, um, to yeah. get better uh, acquainted with them anyways. Um, every, cause everything else about Crystal Skull just feels like right in line with Indiana Jones to me. And, and, um, 
I do think this movie is better than that. I think this one kind of ranks right in the middle. Um, kind of it, it for me, because, um, I haven't always been like to, for me, Raiders of the Lost Ark has always been the best Indiana Jones movie. Hands down. It's no contest. Um, and last crusade and temple of doom have been a lot closer for me than, uh, in how much I like them. Um, then it seems to be other people. Cause I know last crusade is kind of the other big favorite. I think this one's pretty close to last crusade for me, but it's probably Whoa. just below. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe just below. And, and, um, to me, all of the, the stunts and the archaeology and the history and learning stuff and going through puzzles is like, it's all there here, right? What mm -hmm. this movie has for me that, um, that makes me love it is that it connects the movies in a way that, um, makes it very satisfying to view as a series. Like to me before they were very serialized, like there was no reason to like watch them all together in my opinion for like an emotional payoff or um you could really watch them in any order sure um and maybe that's true still for the first four but like with this one by the end of it it gave me um a feeling of you know i can't wait to go back and watch this whole series and like go through this emotional journey with this character again and i don't think i felt that with the first four it's really this one that brought that about for me and um if this is the last one i think it's a great cap to the series and um i think for that like making me view the series differently than i did before and have a different relationship even though i've always liked these movies um and they've always held like a nostalgic place in my heart um there's something a little bit deeper there now and um, I appreciate that. And that's what that's what maybe makes me rank this movie maybe a little higher than it deserves if you were looking at it just <laughs> from, you know, a pure movie standpoint. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. Like if you were someone who had no relationship with Indiana Jones at all and you watched this movie, uh, I could see you being a little harsher on it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, whereas like. You know, I just struggle to really think too harshly about anything on it, to be honest. Um, like, even the de-aging stuff I thought looked maybe, like, the best I've seen. That's where I'm at. I'm like, I look at it and I'm like, yeah, we're, like, 90% there. Yeah. Looks really like good. like, before, every movie, even including, like, some of the ones that I really like, like uh, Irishman or Captain America Civil War. I'm like, yeah, we're, like, 75, 80% there. But, like, this one was, like... Yeah, no, this feels almost seamless. Almost. Not seamless Captain, by any means. Captain but... Marvel was uh, pretty decent, too, I think. Yeah, that's true. I think the more footage you have of that person to reference yeah. when they're younger, <laughs> the yeah. easier it is. The yeah. longer that person's been a screen actor, the better off you are. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, I will leave my thoughts there. Chris, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think... I'm probably the lowest on this out of the three of us. Okay, that doesn't then we'll mean I, move I, on I, then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and who cares? All right. Spoilers? <laughs> uh, spoilers. Um, yeah, yeah, but I don't I don't think I, I disliked it either. Like we kind of, my association with Indiana Jones as a kid, you know, like uh, I remember I was at like a Halloween party and Temple of Doom was on. And I was like, what is this? And I remember just ignoring the rest of the party for two hours or however long. And <laughs> yeah. just being that drawn into insane the when you're a kid. Yeah, into Temple of Doom. So I have like a, a strong sweet spot for Temple of Doom. Uh, and I, I'm scared to rewatch it because everybody's like, oh, it's not that good of a movie. But yeah, I, I think I, if I were to put this, this would be like fourth, you know, which isn't, you know, there's what's five movies. So. Doesn't mean so it's, it's not very good. Yeah, it's towards the I bottom. will say what I I, I thought Phoebe Phoebe Waller Bridge, if that's, if that's how you pronounce her name, she yep. was a good addition. Um, I liked her uh, report repartee or you know like her witty banter with Indiana Jones. I think that was something <laughs> that uh, that I didn't necessarily like, or the, at least in remembering with um, you know like a what's his name from Crystal Skull, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, Shia LaBeouf. Yeah, I, I thought. I don't know. I th she's more charismatic, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Anyways, I enjoyed that uh, part of it. There are some like kind of glaring holes uh, kind of towards the end and just in general, 
like script things that kind of are you like oh, they could have been smoother i think um, okay well hold that thought because i'm going to yeah. ask you specifically about what you're talking about in spoilers yeah. okay i think yeah all right so i'll hold that thought but ultimately it, was this a good movie i enjoyed it i had a good time um you know so uh, uh, you so know yes yeah i liked it <laughs> <laughs> but not as much as you two crazy people loving it yeah. More than Last Crusade. I don't even understand that. No, 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 no. no. I said, it, it, for me, my personal <laughs> ranking is Raiders, Last Crusade, Dial of Destiny, Temple of Doom, okay. Skull. I said, I said this and Last Crusade are about even. I didn't say it was better than Last Crusade. Which, for the record, I also think is insane. But I, <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> yeah. Everybody has their own personal thing. But uh, let's go into spoilers. Let's talk about this movie. Let's get in. Yeah. yeah. So... Sure. Two recommends, and then Chris really, really, really recommends. Yeah. Yeah. He's a drop everything. What are you doing doing if you haven't seen it yet? Quit your job. Disney needs your money. (laughs) It doesn't need any money. Give Disney your 10 bucks. If you haven't seen it, just Venmo Bob Iger 10 bucks. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. If you choose not to watch it, that's realistic. (laughs) Okay. Anyways. (laughs) All right. All right. Spoiler starting now. No, I guess Rosebud is just a piece in a jigsaw puzzle. How many cigarettes you got up here? I'll tell you all about it. Things are going to start happening to me now. And here we go. Uh, Time travel, huh? Yeah. (laughs) How about that? Yeah. Here's the thing is I was actually, uh, like, there had been rumors circulating around this movie for a long time that time travel might be a factor. Dial of Destiny kind of makes it sound like it is yeah and then there was like set pics of like some of the stuff near the end of like soldiers and stuff and people were like what is this movie is this gonna be horrible what's going on (laughs) but man when it happens like in the movie didn't question it at all i was completely there for it yeah sure it's weird i think (laughs) it's weird because the time travel seems different than like the ark of the covenant eating a bunch of Nazis or whatever, you know, like, uh, but I don't think it is, (laughs) you know, like it's all just supernatural, you know, kind of weird stuff happening. I mean, but yeah, Temple of Doom pretty much makes it about as weird as you can get. But maybe it's because for me, and I don't know, I don't have a problem with the time travel, but it just feels different than the other Indiana Jones is what I would say. Like, it's because it's more sci-fi. Like yeah, we it's associate on a sci-fi, time travel with sci-fi more than anything yeah, else. Yeah, side of it as opposed to like like supernatural. Um, maybe that's where I'm – and I'm not like – I don't care. But there is like kind of like a bump where I'm like, oh, time travel. And yeah. I have to think about it for a second. You know, like uh, yeah. it, it's just – it feels a little different than, you know, like and, – and I think that was also with Crystal Skull. Like it wasn't this religious artifact. And maybe that's part of it too. But like – or the supernatural part. It was something based in science. It was sci-fi. Yeah. Is it? But, yeah. un- but unrelated. The first is... three. Sorry. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, well, unrelated. Isn't Crystal Skull the most plausible, like crazy ending? Because it's just aliens in a ship, which like, sure, is yeah. way more likely <laughs> to exist than anything else. And than actually, the Holy happened. Grail. Yeah, and the Holy Grail, or, or the Ark of the Ark Covenant. Covenant, or or like Voodoo I think the Ark stones. of the Covenant actually exists. It. I yeah. just think if, well, if it you existed, open it, it but doesn't. It's, it's not yeah. like a supernatural box. Yeah, like, you're going to yeah. open it and have your face melted off by God or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the power of God. Um, <laughs> here, here's the thing. I think depending on how you view religion probably depends on how far-fetched you think <laughs> and how that crazy be... and outlandish. Because to me, there's zero difference. Well, Except sure. Justin's actually right. Aliens and even sci-fi. time travel are more plausible than the Ark of the Covenant, Temple of Doom, <laughs> or the Last Crusade's like MacGuffins, right? Those are all, those are all like biblical folklore. Sure. And I think, I think it does, Justin hit on it before he's, but like it's sci-fi versus supernatural. That's the only difference I I, I think. And so like, you're like, I like Indiana Jones with supernatural stuff, or I like Indiana Jones with sci-fi stuff. Uh, And really it doesn't matter. And it's just like, just, and I'm just saying, there's just a little bump. I'm like, oh, time travel. Yeah. That seems weird. It's like you, you, you spilled okay chocolate in my peanut butter. It's like, but yeah, you put some sci-fi yeah. into my yeah, fantasy. Indiana Jones stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I, I would say maybe the the difference is that there is no time machine per se. There's a yeah. there's a device that guides you to a supernatural uh, supernatural. I can't say that word. Natural supernatural <laughs> rift in yeah. time. 
<laughs> um, sure. Right. That that's naturally and, and occurring. It's a closed loop. Yes. Yeah. Like the thing, the thing that brings them there is the thing that they show him once they get there and it closes the loop. It's like it, I, I, I see what you're saying, Chris, but I think for me it worked because thematically at this point, like, because what it's doing, it's about time, right? It's about, yeah. it's about the past. It's about, we're, it takes well, place like, at a time when everyone's looking to the moon and yeah. no one has time for old fossils like him and digging around in the dirt and, sure. and society is moving on. So like, yeah, it's, it's, it's that way, but. If you're expecting, which if you've seen any Indiana Jones movie before, you should be expecting the third act to get a little weird. <laughs> right? Um, sure. So I think we're all waiting for it. And the fact that they're able to do it with a device, like in a framing method that ties it in thematically to what's going on with the character. Yeah. Um, it seems too purposeful and rich thematically to bother me, I guess, if that makes sense. Sure. Like, yeah. It feels uh, right. Uh, and... You know, like I said, it is, it's like a bump, you know, and maybe it's more of a complaint that uh, like other people have more of a complaint about it. But like at first I'm like, oh, time travel. The other thing with the time travel thing is, and this is kind of where like the plot, maybe it's not a plot hole, but like the sidekick character, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge's sidekick, he yeah. flies the plane. And there just happens to be another pilot in there. Teddy. Like as soon as he starts flying the plane, we're like, oh, okay, that's all, it's all for the plot, you know, so they can get back. You know, like, uh, that's the only reason they're doing There's not, like, uh, another reason for it. Does that make sense? Like, it doesn't feel like it needs to be there except for to get them back. Um, well, and yeah. I think it also succeeds to add some levity and a laugh. Yeah. Uh, assuming you're into it and you find that humorous. But, like, I don't know, the idea that you fall asleep on your plane <laughs> and you wake up and you're... Some kids flying it. <laughs> yeah, some kids flying it and you're in the past. Yeah. Uh, yeah that was did he funny. wake up after they went through the time travel? No, I think he wakes up like as they're going towards it. Or he's starting to like get coherent about what's going on as they're going towards the rift and he's like, What the hell are we doing? What is this? <laughs> Which is very funny. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, okay, but you mentioned earlier that there were holes. I and immediately I regretted saying holes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like just, I, I guess I would call them like contrivances. They like kind of like that specifically, um, uh, like read. Yeah. That part didn't bother me, but I do see what you're saying. I did have one thing when I watched it the second time, I was like, I like what they're trying to do, but ultimately there's an arc that kind of goes nowhere that I feel would have been better trimmed down. And that is whenever the Nazis show up to Indy's college and they're in the company with, like, a couple CIA agents. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And the CIA agents are either killed off or dropped from the movie shortly after that. So I yeah. feel like maybe that's just an extra level of, like, muddy plot that we don't need. Like, you could just cut those characters out completely and just have the Nazis show up at the school. And you could probably shave, I don't know, five, five to eight minutes off this movie and yeah. maybe have it better paced, in my opinion. They felt like there's a rewrite in there and they lost him, but they had to keep him in there f for these scenes for the movie to make sense. Does that make sense? Like maybe they had bigger parts at a different time. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. But I will say that that is the one element of the movie where I'm like, I, I see what you're doing and I like it, but I don't think that you entirely stick the landing with the CIA subplot. And so maybe just do your best to cut around those characters so they don't feel so... Because, like, when they're on screen, you're like, oh, I'm clearly supposed to be paying attention to this character. They're very unique. They're very interesting. They get lots of close-ups, you know? So it feels like the movie wants you to, like, invest. And then I feel like it kind of drops them. So I don't know. I, I feel like the movie would have been better served to just maybe trim around them as much as possible. I don't know. What do you yeah. think, Justin? Well, I, I think that what I was aware of while watching the movie with um, those characters – is that they added a, a diversity element to the cast. <laughs> sure. And um, I'm grateful for that. And I think that's awesome. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm trying to think if there is like a black person in any of the under, other Indiana Jones movies. Um, and it's getting someone in there. And, and um, because, you know, the, the other, the 
antagonists of Indiana Jones movies tend to be Nazis, which are going to be like blonde hair, blue eyed people. Yeah. Three times <laughs> White... out of five, they're Nazis. Yeah. Um, and then you have Indiana <laughs> Jones and then like the daughter of a friend of Indiana Jones from the, it's like, it's like, well, it's a lot of white people here. Yeah, um, and when you do get diversity, they're like natives of whatever country <laughs> Indiana Jones is stealing from. Yeah. You know, like. <laughs> uh, so I kind of let that go because that seemed to be that seemed to be the biggest reason for it to exist for better right. or worse. And I think that's uh, the reason movie. the character wasn't cut completely. Yeah. So I'm happy to have to... him in there, but I, I understand that like objectively as a movie, they maybe well, I think that character had to be in there. To make sense of the whole, uh, I mean, this is why it didn't get cut necessarily besides diversity, but like she had to make sense of the whole Mads Mikkelsen helping with the uh, the space race. I feel uh, like we don't need to be that to be made sense of. Like it could be any character being like uh, mentioning offhand that he worked for NASA. It's like it's well known that NASA got a bunch of Nazis and the government employed a bunch of Nazis after yeah. World War II. Like, that's something I think you can comment on with any number of characters just dropping a line somewhere. Yeah. Sure. I, I don't know. I think it'd be hard to uh, get to cut that character out. I feel out like completely. the villain could have done it himself. Sure. Yeah. I'm but not sure it's like I, a I think cutting we're... solution. It's, a, it's just like when writing the movie, it's an unnecessary sure, element. The <laughs> it's like, it's got to be done earlier right. in the process. I, well, and that's what makes me think that, like, at one point, that character was bigger, and then it got cut down, but they couldn't. Anyways, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, Maybe there so. are a lot of roles in this movie. There are people who show up for a little bit, and then they'll die, and then Antonio more Banderas. characters will show up for a little bit. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. there's a lot more, like, um, a lot more death in this movie than I feel like in the regular uh, Indiana Jones movie, but I may be wrong on that. But I feel like more side characters show up and die uh, mm-hmm. in this movie than normally. There's a moment uh, that they kind of recognize death too, which doesn't happen in action movies very often where they like get away and Antonio Banderas has just died. And uh, Harrison Ford is like, wait a second before we start cheering. I just had a friend die, you know, like we're let's take a second here, you know? Yeah. yeah. Like my uh, friend was just murdered. Basically. Yeah. 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 There are some good moments. Like, that goes into what I was saying before about like this movie giving some through lines and having these moments that kind of connect everything together. There's um, that moment that gets a little more serious. And then there's the moment where he's talking about, you know, uh, his son enlisting and getting killed mm-hmm. and how he would go back and change that. Um, that I think, <laughs> uh, I think would give crystal skull a, a lot of reason to rewatch, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, and also you have the character of Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who is basically at where Indiana Jones was in Temple of Doom, which chronologically is the first uh, adult Harrison Ford adventure in the series, right? Right. So she's young, she's good-looking, she's energetic, she's smart, she's horny. <laughs> you know, yeah. she's she's going from one fling to the next. She's got a sidekick. Mm-hmm. Um. Right, so she is meant to embody the the brash young ideology that he once was. Like he sees himself in her, right, which is very intentional, obviously. But mm-hmm. I think it's it adds on to kind of what you're saying, right? Is like this movie does a lot to retroactively build and um, do a lot of character work lifting for the rest of the series, right? Like in the beginning, we see amongst his items that, that are confiscated is a picture of Marion. And this would have been, that flashback would have been after Last Crusade, but before Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Mm-hmm. So we see that even though there was like other women and they didn't make it last, it's always sort of been her. Sure. Right. You know, it's always sort of been the main like, uh, love of his life, if you will, you know? Mm-hmm. Then we also get the added context of the relationship with his son being very rocky even after the events of kingdom of the crystal skull they weren't exactly always buddies right uh he mutt joined the war to to make his dad mad which is something that kind of resembles the relationship that indy had with his dad right there's a lot of antagonism there Mm -hmm. so it's like his relationship with his son ended worse but probably looked a lot like 
what his relationship with uh, Henry Jones Sr. was like, you know? Mm -hmm. So I th I think that just kind of, I think you're right, Justin, is I think this movie does a lot to feel like an emotional payoff to things or pay, paying homage to things, but not in a way that feels overtly like checking a list of boxes going down like the fan service route. Yeah. There's very little like, remember this. <laughs> right. Um, type stuff. Yeah. I think the closest thing you get is like, someone's like eels. They look like snakes. And he's like, no, they don't. Like, I think that's yeah. the closest thing to like a wink at the audience. You really get the rest of it's played pretty earnestly. Yeah. It's interesting too, because the last crusade kind of did this stuff. Like, before it was in vogue, you know, like, uh, remember this? Like, this is how Indiana Jones became afraid of snakes. This is how he got his hat. You know, like when he was a kid uh, with River Phoenix and stuff like that, they kind of... Yeah, it's how he got the scar on his chin. Yeah, so they kind of s established a lot of this stuff with Flashback or... But, and I think if, like, Last Crusade came out now, we'd be like, oh, look at this fan service. Back then, <laughs> it was still fan service, but it, it, it wasn't treated the same they way. They didn't have a name for it yet. Yeah. Yeah. We're not inundated with it <laughs> in other yeah. things. Um, you know, if I if I were going to complain about something, uh, I was sitting there kind of thinking, and, and it's maybe not something that is directly happening in this movie, but and also maybe it goes to the idea that a Crystal Skull is like hurt by being a product of its time. And one of those products mm -hmm. of the time was Shia LaBeouf being one of like the bigger actors <laughs> that you could put in yeah. something. Um, and you know, who could know that that's what was going to happen <laughs> that he, or that he was going to like fall off and nobody was going to like him and he was going to be weird. And, um, I felt like people didn't like Shia LaBeouf when he did. <laughs> I'm one of those people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never liked him. I'm proud to say. So I, I feel like it was a controversial take to begin with. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. I, I mean, I have movies where I like him, movies where I don't. And Crystal Skull was one where I did. I did enjoy him, but yeah, I mean, I think you're right in the sense that like the general opinion towards him was waning. But before that, it was like Transformers and, you know, he was coming well, off of holes and like he was doing things like Eagle Eye, like these big, right. he was well, the he, star of the time. Yeah. Here's the thing is, even though I've never particularly liked Shia LaBeouf, I think Shia LaBeouf does a pretty solid performance in Crystal Skull. I think he's, yeah. he is not what is wrong with that movie. No. <laughs> and in fact, but, I think there's less wrong with that movie than the average viewer would have you believe. I think yeah. I think honestly what what a lot of it boils down to and this is going to sound kind of snobbish is I think that with Indiana Jones in particular and sometimes other Lucasfilm properties I feel like there's a wholesomeness to them and a sort of hard on their sleeve kind of mentality that the world sort of outgrew sometime Sincerity. in the 90s. Yeah. 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 And I, I feel like I feel like Crystal Skull, if it had come out 10 years earlier, I mean, obviously there'd be less bad CGI, but I think the reception <laughs> would have been better. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, that <laughs> said, uh, I agree with you that it's well, kind of a bummer that now when you watch Crystal Skull, you're like, ah, Shia LaBeouf, that guy's like, a, I don't know, <laughs> like all kinds of problematic now, you know, and yeah. that's kind of a bummer. But. It is, and I can get past that if it's things that happened after you know like i can still go watch usual suspects even though kevin spacey sucks right sure yeah. but i what my larger point was like i was watching this like like man it's a bummer that that happened uh, uh because we have to write him off in this movie <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and and there's no there's no way to build on that other than like writing him off and they do a good job because i think the scene is really touching when he talks about you know, if he could go back in time and change something, he'd go save his son from yeah, enlisting they use and dying. It for a good character beat. Yeah, and yeah. that works really well. But I, I think, I think it's just it kind of adds to like that Crystal Skull uh, taint, where it's like clearly the worst movie because it establishes a super important character that just can't come back because nobody likes him and he probably wouldn't do it anyways because he's not interested. <laughs> he's <weird. laughs> you know? Um, yeah. I don't know if that's a complaint about this movie in particular. It's just something I felt while watching was like sadness <laughs> yeah i think there's definitely a bitter bittersweet quality to it i mean not even really sweet just kind of kind of a bummer but bittersweet in the sense that they use it to further indy's character but uh yeah i mean i agree with you but here's what i will say though is i'm glad they approached it instead of just not mentioning him 
Like if he's yes. not coming back pretend to the it didn't movie, happen. Yeah. I yeah. would rather they kill him off than just pretend like he's just somewhere else. Yes. It, it <laughs> yeah, was a, like it was a feeling I had of being bummed going into the movie and I was less bummed by the end of the movie with the way that they handled right. it. You're you're right. Cuz they turned it into something sad and 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 poignant, yeah. I think. Um here's what I will say though is if everything everywhere all at once had come out like a year earlier, we would have short round in this movie. <laughs> That's true. Uh, yeah. And I that think would be... it would have been a better product if he was with Short Round and Phoebe Waller Bridge the whole time. <laughs> that would have been <laughs> that'd have been sick. That'd that been would so have tied fun. everything together too. Like, uh, but yeah, really tied man, together. I didn't even think about that till just now. Oh, uh, I thought about it the whole time. I was like, man, I really could go for some Short Round. It sucks that we're <laughs> never gonna get another Harrison Ford and Short Round conversation. Yeah, true. We just gotta. Like, watch I at least him. Like, would have liked like a, a mention of him somewhere, like. They keep in touch. They're pen pals or like short round lives in America. Like, uh, like and we Jonathan... even kind of go ahead. Well, Sorry. like Jonathan Reese Davies does like he got him. He moved him out of, you know, into, into America during the war. It's like, yeah. I would have liked him to have done the same thing for a short round and like have him visit him occasionally or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. Just like a yeah. mention. I, I think. And also like we, in this way, we kind of do get a cover up with no mention because Phoebe Waller bridge has her own version of a short round. You know, like, yeah. and, you know, we don't get any mention. He's like, yeah, oh, I can... in my opinion, that exists more not to be like, remember short round? He was great, but more to make her the like younger Indiana version Jones. of him, yeah. like him in Temple of Doom. Mm -hmm. Like, that's like, that's that incarnation of Indiana Jones that she is now. She's the youth that he yeah. has left behind and lost. So on that note, do we, uh, how do you feel about Fever Waller Bridge moving on to becoming an Indiana Jones type uh, character? Like, if this franchise moves forward, um, do you guys want Phoebe Waller Bridge to take over? Or, I mean, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> it's like a very different movie <laughs> yeah, with her as weird. the lead, right? It's like tonally, yeah. she does different things, which works really well against Indiana Jones. Um, sure. So it'd be, it'd be very different. I'd be curious for sure, like, and, and definitely give it a, a solid chance, the college try. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I also think she is, um, I'm looking up right now, but I think she's writing a Tomb Raider movie, which actually makes more sense uh, if she likes that type of... Um, adventuring? Adventure. F Tomb Raider fits her better, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Although that's probably off now. It does say uh, she is prepping a TV show for Amazon ca called Tomb Raider. So, um, cool. Hmm. Well, yeah. I hope it's good. I, yeah, we'll never see it because of the writer's strike and actor strike. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you guys think that uh, Indiana Jones was going to stay in the past? I thought for a minute. I didn't want it to happen, but I thought I was like, I mean, I guess they could go that way, and it would. It would make sense to, for where he's at, but I like the idea that, um, quote, family, you know, uh, thematically keeps you keeps you in the present even after, like, you would normally check out, you know? Yeah. yeah. It felt very um, purposeful that his goddaughter was the one to uh, drag him into the present and out of the past where he would wallow if given the chance you know talk yeah. him out of what it would be like time suicide you know like that he was it, it was important that he was still in the present you know right that he got over his grief type of right thing. It, yeah like it's brings him to the present both figuratively and literally right uh mm -hmm. that's yeah. that's the role of the younger generation your family to to uh not write off the previous generation, right? Keep them, keep them present. Cause uh, a lot of times people, they get in dark places and they kind of lose hope in the future as they get older, you know? So it's, I, I found that to be emotionally very, uh, rich to think about, I guess. Yeah. And good payoff. If it had ended that way, which I, I mean, I genuinely at points thought he's going to stay here. I'm like, what a, down ending like for, yeah, what for a an bummer. Indiana yeah. Jones movie. I was like, I would have, I probably would have wrecked me for a week, good day or so. <laughs> we go back and like Phoebe Waller Bridge is looking at like history books and there's like 
pictures of Harrison Ford in the past and stuff. Yeah. And the other thing is, I don't think they like uh, Archimedes lasts very much longer in the past. I think he dies in that battle. That's why he made or was making the time. I know it's a closed time loop, so they bring it back to him and no one ever actually makes it. But um, that's why he was working on the time dial because he was asking for help, essentially. So I think historically he dies in that battle. Yeah. So Harrison Ford wouldn't have been in the past for very long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but I mean, I, he if your goal lived, is but... to die in the past, then yeah. that's true. Yeah. You could be, watch this <laughs> battle and die. I think he would have been okay with that um, yeah. in the mindset that he was in. Yeah. I like when he wakes up in his room later and he's in bed and he's like, what? And he looks over and the spe- like the broken spear is just laying on the table. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's like, uh, just to let you know, like, yep, it really happened. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. And also, uh, speaking of what we were talking about earlier with fan service, the recreation with Marion at the end, we're like, well, damn it, Indy, where doesn't it hurt? You know? Yeah. Uh, that worked for me. I, yeah. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Maybe that is a rem- maybe that is quite the remember this moment. But but it's pl- I, it's not played that way. No, it's not. Um, it's played for like a genuine emotional beat. Yeah, and yeah, to me it worked very well. Um, I cried. My wife cried. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if it worked that well for you guys, but it got yeah. me. I didn't cry, but I certainly smiled very big. Yeah. yeah. Like we, I think I laughed. If you're very familiar, you see it coming, right? And like, yeah, that makes it all the better. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I know what's about to happen. Yeah. It's like Look the steamiest, the steamiest moment of like probably anything I ever watched as a child. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. Uh, okay. Well, do we have anything else we want to talk about while we're here? Uh, we didn't talk about Mads Mikkelsen. Oh, we, we didn't, pr- really. We probably should because he's quite good. Yeah. I didn't think his de-aging was super great, though. Really? I think with him, you could tell a lot more. <laughs> That's funny because I didn't even think about his de-aging. Yeah, I, I mean, wasn't sure if they de-aged different. him or not. <laughs> yeah, they de-aged him in the first part. Yeah, which I mean that really makes sense. sense. You yeah. sure? The first but part I didn't was pay fun. attention. I, I like. It may that. just be. Oh, sorry. No, no. I was gonna say the first part was really fun. By the way, just like the opening. Tree yeah, yeah. The thing with all the first sequence, and, the de-aging yeah. part. Yeah, and uh, Toby Jones being funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Accidentally shooting him. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I like how it's play. Yeah, like it, they even get some like old school indie gags, like where he walks into the train cart and like. It's just full of Nazis, and he's got that bullet hole directly over like his chest, <laughs> not his back. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. There's some good classic uh, indie humor in there. I also really enjoyed like the sequence where he's like getting hung, and like the cannonball blows up, or the the explosion happens, and oh yeah, he like escapes and all that stuff. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, it's yeah, fun. Good. It was a good. Yeah, it's like a, a solid intro. Um, like I said, I think there's a couple sections where like the de-aging you're like oh yeah that looks a little wonky mm-hmm. like maybe when he speaks and you could hear like old man harrison ford voice yeah but that was the biggest giveaway was that it's just not how young indy sounded yeah but i mean eh, i guess it's better than you know doing i don't know like is it better the to luke do... skywalker thing <laughs> yeah like what like... they did with luke and book of boba fett where it's like they're almost there that does sound like a young mark hamill if young mark hamill wasn't emoting at all you know you know right sure but they also didn't they they redid his voice that was kind of what i was talking about like they i don't know what they used but it, it wasn't maybe they used like lines of dialogue from other mark hamill projects well, they're, they're using ai the same yeah that's what i'm talking about like yeah. it sounds yeah. like mark hamill but it's like a mark hamill that doesn't emote very well yet <laughs> yeah sure, sure like it's a have you guys seen those things where they have like they're doing like ai covers of modern songs by dead mm-hmm. singers and stuff like if I think I most, I don't know, was it, um, was it like My Heart Will Go On or I Will Always Love You by like Freddie Mercury is like maybe the most recent one I saw. Um, oh, and it sounds like Freddie Mercury and it's pretty good, but it's also not quite there <laughs> as terms of being yeah, something right. like that sounds as good as it would have been. But it's yeah. a bit weird. Yeah. This I, AI I, stuff is like, we are like on a precipice. Things are going to change uh, quickly and very soon, I think. But yeah. that's neither here. That's not about Indiana Jones. Although it is somewhat about Indiana Jones because he is living in a world where they're walking on the moon. We are living in a world 
where AI is going to be a thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So the future's coming. Yeah. Yep. Are and we ready? Mads Mickelson can act well. Oh yeah. yeah. That's where we sure. started. I don't know if we ever yeah. got all the way. We got sidetracked. Yeah, well, I think I think he worked. Do you guys feel bad? It feels like he he's always playing a Nazi. Uh, <laughs> Is it? I, there, he has plenty of other roles, but like his big paydays, I feel like. Look, just because I was born German doesn't mean I should play a Nazi. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, but I think like I don't remember what it was, but there's some some project where. Uh, the German people were like super happy to step in and play Nazis because they, they don't like them. <laughs> and they're happy yeah, to yeah. portray them as like evil and bad people. That's true. So it's not quite the like, uh, I don't like Nazis. I don't want to be one. You know, I knew that he would be a good villain uh, in that scene where uh, he's talking to the hotel. Um, I don't know. Bellboy. I don't know. Bellman. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, the black man who's yeah. basically like, do you feel like you won? Oh Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, "Damn, mm-hmm. that's what a jerk." Yeah, what a jerk. But also, it's like I'm sure that that guy's probably like, I mean, he's got a point. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, being a black man in 1969, I imagine you're pretty conflicted about serving in the military. It wasn't like cruel, but it was just mean enough to be like, I mean, f- he's got a point. Yeah. But like. He's got a point, a but I'm still glad. It. Yeah, it's still, he's still better off than if Nazis had a one, right? Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, him and a lot of other people. Yeah, cool. Yeah, all right, cool. So, did we do it? I we done did it. Think we did. Yes. All right, cool. It's done. Well, let me ask you guys real quick. This has this is just like a wrapping it up. Uh, we can maybe cut this out. Uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer come out. Um, next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are you guys' plans? Are you you're going on vacation, right, Mike? Yeah, I'm still gonna see one or both of them the first chance I get. Maybe one of them while on vacation if there's a free evening or something. But uh, my plan is to see both of them. And yeah. Oppenheimer first is what I've decided. Yeah, mm. I, uh, I have what about a, you, Justin. I have a friend coming into town next weekend, so I won't have the free time to do the the Barbenheimer. Uh, double Marathon. feature. Okay. That like friend doesn't thing. like movies? Um, well, he does, but we have plans. We're, uh, we're going to a concert and stuff. Um, stupid. So, uh, so I won't don't have time to do both, but I think I might try to do like an opening night um, Barbie with my wife and then find time to do Oppenheimer a little bit later. Um, yeah. Like early the, the following week, I think is my plan. What about you? Yeah. I... I really want to do do them both in one day. I know Alamo is like, if you see them both in one day, they're giving they're like there's some sort of contest, like you get in, entered into a contest. I I think that'd be really cool, but I don't know that I can. Usually, I have Wednesday and Thursday off, and it, you know, like they play them Thursday. They usually come out, but not till like you know early afternoon, evening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know that I can see both. The Alamo here's doing like a three p.m. showing of Barbie on that Thursday, so. Maybe check yours. Well, okay. The other question would be, too, and I, I think the, the way to do it is Oppenheimer and then Barbie. What do you guys think? Like, if you were doing it you know, both in one day, how do you how do you do it? Um, uh, <laughs> I mean, like I said, I'm doing Oppenheimer first. I've already decided that. So. But if you're going to do it in the same day, you know you're going to see both of yeah, them. Yeah, same. Same? Yeah. Okay. Get, yeah. get the longer yeah. one out of the way first. Yeah. And the easier to watch one, kind of like dessert afterwards. Yeah. I, I think that's valid and fair and probably what i would do if i could choose yeah awesome cool, cool. <laughs> well right, sorry with, to... <laughs> with that i i believe this episode is done right mm-hmm. uh, i believe so all right well thank you so much listener for listening and of course as always thank you jake wagner russell for doing our intro and outro music if you want to hear more of his music you can go to soundcloud.com slash bobscotch all right stay tuned to this channel like subscribe all that stuff uh our next episode will Well, uh, we're not sure yet, but the next Casually Criterion, which may be the next episode, will definitely be Mishma, A Life in Four Chapters. That's right. All right. Uh, Thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Stick around next week. We'll probably talk about sports because Mike won't be here. So Uh, That's what we do every time Mike's gone. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Review something sporty. Yeah. Yeah. Better get all the lame stuff out of the way before the cool guy comes back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Be extra lame. See you. Right, bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Bye. bye.